Hello, thanks for joining me today. I'm Jan Clothier of Thinking Stamping and I'm an independent stamping up demonstrator based in New Zealand. And today I thought I'd share with you how I made this card using the gorgeously made bundle. Um, I made it for a colour challenge at Colour Inspiration where I'm a crew member and the colours that we had to work with this week were Moody Mauve, Misty Moonlight and Fresh Freesia. So I'm currently in love with the Gorgeously Made set and so that's what I got out to work with today. Now if during the course of today's video you see anything that you would like to add to your craft station and you live in New Zealand, please shop with me. There's a link to my online store in the video description below and you can also get to it through the details which will pop up at the end card of this video. So what do we need to make this gorgeous little Gorgeously Made card? Well... Obviously, the gorgeously made bundle, um, if you haven't seen it before, it has these lovely images, uh, a little grungy um, background stamp, some foliage, some bits and pieces, and five gorgeous dies, which we will see pretty much all of during the course of this card. So, what do we need in terms of paper? Well, I started with a Moody Mauve base so for me it's a standard card size so it's half of an A4 piece of paper so it's 21 centimeters that way scored at 10 and a half and I've cut it at 14.8 and if you're a um, not a metrics person but an imperial person then just use whatever um, cards card base is your standard size because this is my standard size so okay a base um, I've got two pieces of basic white, which are cut uh, half a centimetre, and if you're metric, that's about a quarter of an inch, smaller. Now, they're both the same. One's for the inside of the card, so we'll just pop that away because we don't need that right now. And one is for the front. Okay, I've also got um, a little tag of Moody Mauve, so that uses the beautiful little torn-edged um, tag die which I'm in love and I've used endlessly this this season okay so I've done it I've white embossed you're a great friend onto Moody Mauve and cut it out with that and I have another scrap of uh, Misty Moonlight which I've cut exactly the same and I'm going to layer those up before I add them um, obviously there are other sentiments you could have used the thank you and the hello all fit beautifully um, into that little label now for my background here I have I could just use plain misty mauve but I wanted a little bit more texture than that so I've taken some DSP from the Earthen Elegance set um, you know it's the back of that beautiful one now I you know if you had a piece that was 10 by 14 16.3 you could use that uh, I'm getting near the end of my earthen elegance so I'm going to make do with two little strips 10 centimeters wide and I'm just going to attach them to my card front there right so to create all of this beautiful foliage in the middle uh, first off I've taken a piece of fluid 100 um, watercolor paper and I have used this beautiful little die here and I've cut two of those out and we'll be dealing with those. And then, I don't know whether you can see, but in the background here, I have cut a vellum piece, a piece out of vellum. And the reason that I did that, I used that one. The reason that I did that is because after I'd done the background stamping in Fresh Freesia, I decided it was a little bit too strong. And so I popped in that piece there just to help tone down the Fresh Freesia coming in from behind. And... That is pretty much all that we require. Now, you'll have noticed that the, the piece here has changed its look somewhat. So all I've done there is this is my piece which started out 10 by 14.3. I've taken this edge die here, which, oh, again, I love this because it turns everything into a, like a beautiful little spiral notebook. I just put it through the die cut machine. I cut the top there. And this die gives you a faux torn edge. And so just popped it through the die cutting machine and that turned into this. Now, I also did exactly the same thing 
to my piece that I'm going to pop on the oops, which I'm going to pop on the inside of the card. I'm going to stamp that up a bit. You'll see it at the end of the um, video what I've done on the inside. Right, so now it's just a matter of making everything and popping it together because we've got all the bits. So before we get started, I'm just going to do the things which don't ex require very much explanation. I'm just going to glue. And if you're a tape person, use tape. I'm just going to pop those there, leaving my 5mm border. And I'm going to do the same at the bottom. And as I said, if you have the luxury of still having quite a lot of Urban Elegance DSP left, you can cut a piece that's 10 by 14.3. Okay, so that's going to go there. And this piece will eventually, when it's all dollied up, uh, go over the top. Okay, so I'll just pop that over there. And what are we going to do next? Well, I think what we'll do next is we will deal with the um, watercolour paper foliage because that's going to need a little moment or two to dry. So I started, oh, we'll do the blue one first. So Misty Moonlight, I, I know a lot of people just squeeze onto the lid, but I don't like that. So I always put my ink onto an acrylic block like that. And I'm going to get my water painter. If you don't have the water painters, they come in a set of three and you get a sort of a finish, a finish tip, a medium tip and a big fat watercolory tip, which uh, I'm not actually going to use today. I'm going to use the medium -y one. No particular reason, I just I just have. I just thought that the fat one was perhaps a little bit too fat. So when I'm watercolouring uh, like this, I'm going to start with just squeezing out some water and just putting down some water over the whole deal. And then I'm just going to squeeze a bit of water into my ink and give myself some liquid. Now, I'm not aiming for a lovely, even, all-over coverage. I want it to be a little bit um, uneven so that it's got more interest in the finished product. You know, I'm not trying to... If, I, if I'd wanted it a lovely, even, all-over colour, uh, then I would have simply cut a piece of um, Misty Moonlight rather than a bit of watercolour. And so I've taken the liquid there, and now I want some darker bits, so I'm going into the less diluted ink so that I'll get a stronger... Um, a stronger flash of colour from them. Okay. And it doesn't even matter if you've got some bits that are completely like, missed out. So I'm going for that sort of uneven, distressed look. Now I'm just going to leave that over there. I squeeze my water painter to clean it out a bit so that we're ready for the next one. And for the next one, I'm doing two things. I'm Because I've got these three colours that are part of the colour challenge, I'm going to do a bit of Fresh Fresia. And then I'm going to overlay and pick up the detailing with the Moody Mauve. So let's see how that works. Um, I'm going to start with just a bit of water. Because... If the paper has got some moisture on it, the ink is more likely to run on it. You're more likely to get a solid blob of, of colour if you put the ink straight onto totally dry paper. So that's why I've dampened it a little bit. And I'm going to start with the lightest colour, which is the Fresh Freesia. And I'm just going to do a little bit of a wash. A very See, the ink is very dilute. So I'm just washing over the colour. And then I'm going to squeeze some water in, and get myself some moody mauve, and I'm just going to concentrating on the stem. Just going to put in a bit more. And I'm going to just come back in here. I'm not too bothered about cleaning out my brush because I want these colours to mix together. So I'm just going to go in there and just Put a bit more. Now, how's that going to look? Okay, perhaps a bit more up there. So you can sort of play around and get as much or as little, well, no, as much colour as you want. As always with sort of sponging and inking techniques, start little and, and work in because once it's there, it's there. But you can always add more. 
right up until that point. Okay, so I'm just going to pop those over there to dry while we do the rest of our um, the rest of our bits and bobs. But the um, water painter is going to come back shortly. Okay, so now while the while the watercolor stuff is um, drying, I'm going to take the background sort of distressed text stamp, which again <laughs> I love. Um, I've got a lot of things I love about this set. And I'm going to stamp in the background some of that. Now, as I said, I was a bit bothered by how strong it was. Um, and you'll also notice, if you've watched me before, you know I don't usually put the sticker on the back of my stamps. But in this case, I was constantly having to look and see which way was up. And I realised that just in that top corner there, there's a little six that I can read quite easily. So I put the sticker on just so that I'd know which way was up without having to... Um, without having to, to hunt every time. Now, because I was unhappy with how strong it was on my original card, I'm just going to stamp off before I do some more. Okay. All you're really doing is just laying in a bit of colour in the background. You know, you, it doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, so that's that. And then if you have a look here, you'll notice that I've got a lovely little bit of speckling happening so I'll do that too now while we're waiting um, I decided that I didn't want speckling on the um, on the bit that looks like the um, that looks like the spiral bound notebook so I'm actually just going to pop a post-it note over there so that bit remains pristine and move everything out of my way that could possibly be um, splattered and I'm going to go back to this bit of Misty Mauve ink and I'm going to make it quite inky. And then I'm going to just tap it on the back of my bone folder. Until I'm happy with the amount of splatter that I've got. Now, the further away you are from where you do the splattering, the kind of finer mist you're going to get. If you want it really splattery, do it right up close, if you want quite big splatters. Also, the wetter your ink is, the more splat you'll get. So just, you know, play around with what you like the look of. And then when you're happy, you go, great, done. While all these things are drying, if you've got a few things drying, we shall just do the other stuff. So I'm going to just pop in, pop together, layer up the lab, the sentiment and the sentiment. I'm really doing that just, it's, I always think it's a bit like, you know, when, when you were a kid and you were at primary school and you did your heading and you underlined it with your pen and ruler. Um, I think that adding in a little shadow tag like this is the same effect, it kind of underlines and when you're doing a colour challenge of course it's quite a good way to just bring in and draw, bring in the colours and draw them together. So we've got that and now we are hopefully up to assembly. So here's our card front that we started with and this one here is going to go on like that so we shall give it some glue no, glue, you know I like glue because it gives you the wiggle room. Uh, what I'm going to do with these is I'm just going to do very, 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 very tiny, tiny dots. And if you, if your ink, if your glue is really full, um, and you think you won't get tiny, tiny, tiny dots, then don't be afraid to just use a sponge. And I'm just going over with my sponge just to squash them a bit so that I get less ooze happening. Okay, so now we shall just pop that on, making sure it's nice and straight, and that we haven't got any weird little bits of the designer series paper poking out. Okay, and now we're going to go for the piece of vellum. Now, how do you attach the vellum? Glue, oh, glue doesn't really do it. Um, I'm going to use some glue dots just placed 
you know, I'm, I'm not going to like stick it down hard, hard out because I do want it to lift a bit from the page. I, I don't like it. I don't, oh, I don't, I sell, I won't say I never, but I seldom ever glue down everything um, totally flat because I like things to look like they are lifting off the page. I think it can look a bit lifeless when everything's glued on totally, totally flat. Because you do have to walk a fine line between lifted enough to look interesting and lifted so much that when someone pulls it out of the envelope it rips. So, you know, there's a bit of a bit of a balancing act going on there. Okay, so should we just pop that there? And I've only done three or four because the other stuff's gonna go over the top of it and that's gonna help hold it down. Now let's get these uh, these ones back and see how they're looking. Now you can see that with this die, um, there are pieces that pop out. Oh, whoops. I lost, <laughs> obviously didn't screw that one on tightly enough, okay. Um, that pop out. Now it's up to you how many you leave in or out. Like you can take them all out, or you can leave some of them in, or you can leave them all in. It's up to you. It just gives you a, a different look. These are quite tricky to glue, so I'm going to do the matte and sponge method that regular watchers will have seen me use plenty of times before. So I'm just going to get that old bit of sponge and I'm just going to dab. And as I said, I'm not dabbing right all the way to the edges because I want it to look a little bit lifted. Okay, now the... Sentiment is dimensionaled, so we shall give it give it some dimensionals to give it some lift. And we'll flick them off. Okay. Our little tweezers. I'm going to line that up with my grid paper just to help me maximize my chances of getting it straight have a check and if you're happy then give it a press because until you press them down you've got a hope of getting them off now to finish off some embellishments i've just gone for the 2023 to 2025 in color dots and i'm going to use the moody mauve um you could probably get away with boho blue and, and call it um call it misty moonlight if you wanted to but I'm quite happy to use these lovely uh, in colour dots just because you know, I, I do love them. And I love them largely because they're a little bit shiny, but best of all because they come in three sizes and I love to be able to use a small, a medium and a large. Okay, so there we've got the inside and the only other thing, I won't do it right now, um, I did say that I've, I've cut um, a piece like that to go on the inside and all I did was I just used some of the stamps and um, just did a little collage of stamping uh, in the top corner and popped it in the centre. Obviously you could do whatever you wanted. Um, I always say to my class people that the inside is a great place to have an experiment. So there we have it, the uh, Misty Moonlight Moody Mo Fresh Freesia version of Gorgeously Made. Now, as I said, if you've seen anything that I've used today that you would like to add to your craft station you live in New Zealand, please shop with me. There's a link to my online store in the description below. As always, I'm happy to answer questions and I can be reached again through the details in the description below or um, my blog or Facebook page, the details of which are going to pop up in the end card shortly. Um, if you've liked what you've seen and you haven't subscribed to me, please subscribe so you don't miss anything new that I do. And above all else, everyone, happy stamping.